In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can modify the default document that Inkscape loads whenever you launch Inkscape and save those customized settings so that the next time that you load Inkscape, it opens that default document with all of your customizations in it. So it's a huge time saver. Um, it, it's something that I do with all my applications. You know, I, I set them up for my defaults the way that I, you know, my workflow. So it's a huge time saver. All right, so let's go ahead and load Inkscape. We'll take a look at the default document. We want to take a look at what the current attributes are of the default document. So if we go into file, we look at document properties. It'll bring up your document properties dialog. And as you can see, by default, it loads up format A4. And uh, the, um, the format measurement unit is in millimeters. The display unit is in millimeters. Okay, so. And then it shows your view box. Um, one of the things that I don't care for is the shadow on the page. So I am going to disable the shadow on that page. And um, the format that I work in the vast majority of the time, because what I create is for display, it's not for print. So the vast majority of the time, what I'm creating is a, uh, a document that is in video HD format, 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to go ahead and change this A4 for the default document. And I'm going to change it to video HD 1080p by 1920 okay so that's that's portrait format so what we're going to do is we're going to change it to landscape so now it's 1920 by 1080 widescreen landscape format my default uh, resolution uh, pixel per unit is 100 since this is set up for millimeters let's change that to pixels so i want my my format to be that video resolution in pixels i want my display unit to be in pixels and if you look you'll notice now that my um, my rulers and guides up here are at the top and on the side of this document screen are all in pixels now instead of millimeters there's some other things i want to change while i'm here so let's go into guides, show all guides, grids, rectangular grid, that's fine. Um, color, scripting, we don't need to mess with metadata. Okay, so I want my document to contain the same met metadata each time. If I need to change any of it, then I can, I can modify it in a non-standard document if that's what I'm creating. So title, I'm going to put um, created by... Tinker's Lab using Inkscape. I'm not going to put anything down for the date, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy the Tinker's Lab here because I'm going to use it several times. Creator is Tinker's Lab. The rights is going to be copyright Tinker's Lab. Publisher is Tinker's Lab. Uh, language is going to be English. Keywords is going to be Tinker's Lab and Inkscape. Description. I'm going to put template HD 1920 by 1080. Okay. And I'm going to say save as default. And now I'm going to go to license. And it's set for proprietary license. So I'm going to leave it whatever type of license I choose to put on the work that I'm doing. Sometimes I do it, you know, specifically for Taker's Lab. Sometimes I might be creating something to upload for public domain. You know, so you can change the license as appropriate for that. Okay, so... We've, we've uh, created our default document. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and um, size it for the screen here. One of the other things that I do is I'm, with the documents that I create is I'm typically creating it with three to four layers. So I'm going to take the first layer and I'm going to change it to BG for background. 
And then I'm going to take this rectangle tool over here and I'm going to make a rectangle. And then I'm going to resize it to the same dimensions as the document. Pixels 1920 by 1080. I'm going to go over here to my align tool and center it on the page vertically and horizontally. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to I'm going to make the fill on this white instead of blue. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of times I will use transparent images as part of my as part of my composition, and they may not have any type of background. So I'm going to put a solid background on here for right now in case I need it. I'm going to lock that layer down. I'm going to create a new layer above that one. And I'm going to call this one um, image. And then I'm going to create yeah, another layer. I'm going to lock that layer. I'm going to make sure all these layers are locked. I have to actually unlock them to do something to them. That way something doesn't get accidentally changed. And this layer is going to go above that one. And this one is going to be text. And then the last layer I am going to create is going to be called header. And all of the compositions that I create usually have these four layers. So I want those, I want my default document when it loads. Not only do I want the attributes of the metadata, the license, the dimensions, of the document but and I also want that background and I want those other layers that way I don't have to create them each time they're gonna be they'll be part of my default document okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna save it in my home folder here and I'm gonna you need to name it specifically so this is gonna be called default default SVG I'm gonna save it in my home folder Okay, so we've saved it. Now we need to find out where we need to copy this default template that we've just created. So let's go into Edit and then go into Preferences. And then if we go into System here, you'll see that there's a list of all the folders where different things can be found. And one of the what we're looking for is User Templates. Now I'm running I'm I'm running the Linux operating system. So if you're running on Windows or if you're running on Mac OS, your path is going to look a little bit different than mine, you know, where, where it has your user templates. So this is where you will go to find out where that folder is. Okay, so I can see that my user templates are in home, Tony, dot config, Inkscape templates. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my home folder. And I'm going to grab this default SVG that we just created. I am going to go into view here so I can see my hidden hidden files. And I'm going to find that config folder. And then I'm going to look for Inkscape. And then I'm going to look for templates. Okay, and so now I'm going to paste that default CFG file that we just created into that templates folder my user templates folder all right so now that we have that saved let's go back into Inkscape now and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close out Inkscape and then we're gonna launch it back up again and see if it maintained if it reads that default template now that we just created and copied to our user templates folder so now I'll bring back Inkscape back up again and we'll see what it does Okay, so you can see that my document, and we'll look at the dimensions here, but it certainly looks like it's dimensions I set. You can see that the default document that it's loading now is my template, has all four of the layers that I created. They're all protected. They're all locked down. And so if I go into my document properties, we can see that it's, it is the video HD 1920 by 1080, landscape landscape format it even maintained the the unit of measure that I have which is pixels and then if we go into the metadata you can see that everything that I set in the metadata and told it to save as my default is still there and my license is still there 
So now when I go into, when I load up Inkscape, the default document that it's going to load up is going to be my template that I just created. That I, so now I'm not having to go in each time and resize my document, remove the shadow, which I don't care for, change my uh, unit of measure, create the four layers I just created with the colored background that I created. Everything's already going to be there. So it's a huge time saver. All right, so that's a wrap on this episode. Stay tuned, and in the next episode, I will try and publish um, how you can create additional custom templates for different purposes. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Tinker's Lab.